your eyes for a minute Close your eyes for a second I won't change my mind Hi Posh fam, welcome back to my channel Posh Card Eyes Unfiltered Very quickly we are going to be talking about All things married at first sight Yes, married at first sight is back for ep for season 11 Now, I know you and I know that these contestants just don't seem to get it. They don't. And that is so sad for them. However, for you and I, it's for our entertainment. And I'm going to come as much as I can to share the joyous, humbling, experiencing moments of this contestant's life on the show with you. Now, season 11 is no different from previous season. And you would ask me, married at first sight, what's the success rate? Guys, 11 season, and there's probably maybe four, three couples still together. In a normal academic performance, that is a failure rate, right? And having seen this failure rate, you will think would be hopeful, potential, love seekers will try a different route, right? wrong but before i get ahead of myself let's do a quick housekeeping thank you guys for coming on board the posh farm train thank you for subscribing to my latest subbies and for my existing subbies thank you so much for staying on let's get into the swing of things do not forget to like subscribe and share this channel with your friends as i have said earlier my dad first side is back i didn't think i was going to run this commentary and now i am maybe seven episodes behind I'm going to try as much as possible to hit all the points that I need to hit so that I can get through the commentary of this episode that I have missed. I don't have the um, the opportunity to pre-record the show, so I'm now going on my mobile phone right now. But the problem is I have got very little window of opportunity to watch these shows as well as come run the commentary. I've got a minor close by. I don't want her to watch most of these things. And so it is hard for me. However, I would make the best of and the most of it when I can. And please, guys, we will try. If it's possible to run all through the commentary, I will. But I don't think so because there's a lot to unpack. With that said, we meet this season's love bomb or love hopefuls. 20 contestants. And I would say this season, it is all encompassing. My, my that first side literally diversified. They brought in... If you're talking about golden age, <laughs> the baby boomer. Sorry, guys. I, I I didn't want to say that. I didn't mean to say that. If it's bringing an older, matured couple into the mix, yeah, they did that this season. We are, we can see a 63 year old male as well as a 43 year old female and a 51 year old female. So they have diversified this season. A black girl has been introduced. There is another Asian man, Collins, if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna get to that. There is also a gay couple. Now, we only get to see them in the first episode, guys. But there's more to this particular story. I'm going to be focusing on episode one. Now, the contestants and the judges are all in talks. They have had all their debrief session, multiple auditions. They have selected based on the scientific method that they use in selecting them and found their perfect match not. Guys, if there's anything to go by, if you want to understand this game or this particular show, it is in the details. It is in their sub story. During their audition, they are made to recount their saddest moment. And these producers exploit this moment and find them the not so perfect match. Now, for their misery, yes, for our fun and entertainment, absolutely, we're going to probably get our money's worth. Now, so this season, we've got 11 male and 9 female. Like I said, there is a gay couple. And they are all ready to go. First marriage went underway. Sarah and Tim were sort of matched up perfectly. She is Caliente or, or, of Caliente origin. She's Colombian. And uh, the guy is well-seasoned and well-traveled. So he's been everywhere. He's even ha he even has an adopted Ethiopian sister. He didn't fail to mention. Now, Tim seemed like... You know, he seemed all good on paper. He seemed like the guy next door. He seemed like a perfect match. Right? Wrong. Well, we didn't know this at first because team came up. I've got a business. Now I am trying to diversify. Think about multiple streams of income. I find my current 
business a little bit stale and so i'm trying to embrace new opportunity diversify my portfolio and hopefully get some oomph into my life to get but first i need to find a partner okay meet sarah who has been through strings of breakups and cheaters and now she's hopefully thinking that married at first sight is the last bus stop for her happy ever after girl we wish you all the best now on to the big day we see these two people match up they were happy at their match up of course like i said it all looks good on paper okay marriage ceremony over and then we head straight to the uh, reception. Before we get to the reception, I'm going to be introducing you to the second marriage. And that is with Cassandra and Tristan. Cassandra is an African bride. She has got a lot of sub story. Literally very heartbreaking. She lost her the love of her life, her first love via a motorcycle accident, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, guys, correct me. And also uh, in 2020, the year that we all don't want to have on our calendars, her mom. Uh, passed away from cancer. Now there is a particular team this particular season and that is most of these contestants are coming in with heartbreaks and very deep emotional uh, traumatic events. We're going to meet the couple, a guy who just lost to the dad six weeks ago and we're going to meet a girl called Natalie who also lost her dad six weeks before joining, coming uh, or getting the prospect of auditioning or starting for filming uh, before filming began. So I really don't understand why this is happening but they had to tell us this and i imagine how we're going to be exploiting this guy's traumatic events <laughs> i know we are now back to sarah and tim at the reception it all seemed perfect until tim decided to share that he only just broke up from his girlfriend six months prior now guess what guys six 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 it's a team now i don't understand six months six weeks six weeks what's going on with number six guys i don't know tell me anyway that was a huge red flag for sarah because tim said i need you to help me i think he speaks before he thinks so the guy just blots out everything that comes out of his i don't think he has a brain anyway and he just says it and when he says it he realizes oops i did it again and no it's the deal has been done well cassandra and tristan they seem like the perfect match it's always the same interesting feels very insecure about himself he feels ugly poor thing cassandra is coming from all of this emotional roller coaster i really don't know how this matchup is going to progress but it looks good they met they liked each other tristan likes the family the family loves tristan and it's a way at the reception where you know this is the team for this particular episode one the 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 best man speech okay whilst cassandra's dad gave a befitting emotional heart stringing speech about the love of his life his late wife and the daughter that he now has and now the son-in-law that is about to join them he was filled with emotions i loved every bit of his speech but then we cross over to sarah and teams now they, she is reeling from the bombshell of he just breaking up with his girlfriend six months prior and even thinking about proposing to this chick I mean, guys, talk about you not even grieving your last relationship. Like, you are ready to, I don't know what they call it, rebound? I don't know. Anyway, she held it together. Her friends, by the way, I love this particular best friend of hers. If you know this girl's outfit, please link me on the comment section. I love the dress. She is beautiful, very well-spoken, very knowledgeable and intelligent. Guys, you should listen to your friends before you come on to the show. I don't know. But then again, they're all looking for their two seconds of fame. I'm pretty sure half of the contestants now have an only fan page. Some are already on a porn site. I don't know. I'm just looking at previous seasons to just tell you how this is going to play out. Okay? Don't blame the shooter. Don't blame the messenger. Please. 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 Meanwhile, I'm not sure where Tim got his best mate from. Who is the one giving, giving the speech today the guy did say earlier on that he's a comedian so i don't know if this was planned rehearsed with team because the guy delivered a whole lot of bs on this particular speech he kept on going on codes excuse me guys codes that were ridiculous i am not sure but all i could tell you he sold team as the douchebag that we can clearly see I mean, he sold it to us. If there was any red flag that was missing, 
Tim's best mate ticked all of it and reminded Sarah, like, this is what you're buying. I'm not sure if you want to buy this, but I've given you the warnings. These are all the warnings, list of red flags this guy has been done, been whatever. And it was glorious, not of the desirable tone, guys. I really don't know. Safe to say, Sarah has got it in the bag, not. She is in for a huge shocker. And I think this is just going to make this season enjoyable and pleasurable for me it will be worth the two seconds of halfway watching in my car whilst i go to work and on my way back to pick up my child i will be having a blast guys like i said from that speech it just all it went downhill from there it went downhill the speech was tacky the best mate had no decorum they didn't even read the room i don't know i don't know well the night was over before you could say Jack Robinson and they were all then headed for their honeymoon. Um, Cassandra and Tristan went somewhere south uh, South Australia. That was where they, whilst uh, Sarah and Tim went to Fiji for Bula for their honeymoon. Whilst Tristan and Cassandra were just having the happy, joyous moment of becoming a newlywed, we see Tristan surprising his uh, new bride with her 30th birthday with gifts, flowers, and Tim Tam. How lovely. Tim, you are off to the good start ticking all the right boxes. Please, let's do it this way. Sarah and uh, Tim, on the other hand, it's sort of, uh, honestly, guys, quite well you know they were sort of coming back from the crazy wedding and the reception from hell together with the best best man from i don't know i'm not sure where they got that guy from and then they decided okay or rather team tried let me make up for all of the uh, disappointments i mean it's not i'm not i'm not like my it's not the the odds are already stacked against me let me try and crawl my way back up this was team's idea decided to prepare a beautiful and uh, dinner by the sunset, they sat down, conversations, you know, little nothings, basically. <laughs> they were trying, scraping through the barrels. And I think for some reason, Tim felt telling the girl to relax was going to make it all the way better. And guess what? Sarah was already on edge. She was on high tension, given how this whole thing has started. So she was in no place relaxed. And I can understand that. But now, Tim, you making it very obvious just was not the right thing to do. And so she saw red. And this is where it ends for episode one. Sarah and Tim already, you know, it is like a uh, way to nowhere. And well, where, where I'm gonna go from here? We'll find out more on episode two, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you shortly. Don't forget to stay locked in here.